Now, it's second nature to look at numbers and metrics during and after a bike ride or a run. Things like speed, power, pace. But what about swimming? Well, you may be surprised that there's quite a few of these metrics also available for swimming. Some of them have only become available in recent years due to things like these on our wrists. But which of these numbers actually help your swimming? Which ones should you be paying attention to while swimming? It's time to get techy. Right, first off, James, we should uh, probably address this. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, so what we're referring to is the watch v no watch debate. Now, there may be some swimmers out there shuddering at the thought of us guys even considering to wear these watches in the water whilst swimming. Yeah, exactly. In the swimming world, wearing a watch while you're swimming is just not cool. Yeah, I mean, but we're, most of us anyway, triathletes, and I mean, we know we're not cool, right? Speak for yourself. Wow. Well, anyway, in all seriousness though, swimmers mostly have coaches on the pool deck, they'll be feeding back numbers and metrics to them. Yeah, whereas triathletes are often doing their sessions on their own. And at the very least, a watch makes recording your session and reviewing it later a lot easier. Yeah, and also as triathletes, it's just really useful being able to record this data, we're able to manage our training load or even pass that on to a coach. So basically what we're saying is, don't be peer pressured by those swimmers out there. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get stuck into this. Yeah, and let's start with a basic one, time. Simple, how long have you been in the pool for? I mean, how difficult can it be? Well, actually, there is a little bit more to it. Obviously, you have the overall time that you've been in the pool, but you also have rep time, rest time, or even turnaround time. Now, rep time is referring to the amount of time it takes you to complete a rep. For example, you might do 100 meters in one minute 30. The rest time is the amount of rest that you take between those reps. So, for example, you might do four lots of 100 meters with a rest time of 20 seconds between each rep. And then we have a slight alternative, which is turnaround time. This kind of combines that rep time and rest time into one. So let's use that four lots of 100 meters example again, but this time we're gonna do it off a turnaround time of two minutes. So if you were to come in on one minute 30 for that rep, that means you have 30 seconds until you need to go again. Now, of course, for those swimmers out there, like myself, we're brought up using pace clocks on the side of the pool, or even a coach yelling the numbers at us. But if you're jumping in on your own, then that is where these can be really beneficial. It sort of takes the maths out of it for you. It records you swimming, it auto detects you stopping, auto laps, records your rest for you, and simply tells you when and where you need to be. You can even actually go as far as building workouts into it for you as well. I mean, it's gone up a few levels since my old school swimming days, I can tell you that. And then there's distance, another simple one. You have your overall session distance, and then you also, as Mark has been referring to, have your rep distance. For example, you may do five reps of 200 meters, or as we call it, five by 200, and your total session will be something closer to 1500 meters with the warm up and warm down. Simples. And then we have pace, basically how fast you're swimming. Now, interesting, this is normally referred to, or showing your smartwatches and whatnot, as your time, per 100 meters. Now, primarily we use this to check our pace within reps. For example, we might be doing eight by 100 meters at race pace, or perhaps we'd be looking to incrementally increase our pace throughout those reps. So it's really important that we're tracking the pace. Beyond that, we may be looking at our pace or average pace over an entire set, or probably more interestingly, our pace within a race. Now, like with most sports, pace is a very important metric. And if you're really serious about trying to further your performance, then you wanna be keeping an eye on it. Okay, now let's dive into the more nerdy swim metrics, stroke rate. This is basically the speed at which you're moving your arms. It is the number of strokes you take per minute. Much like cycling cadence, this is very individual and generally taller swimmers will have a lower stroke rate and also the distance that you're swimming will affect your stroke rate. It is also influenced by your fitness. The fitter you are, the quicker and more powerfully you can move your arms through the water and the higher your stroke rate will be. But just to confuse things, we also have stroke counts. Now this is the number of strokes it takes you to complete a given number of lengths. And it's largely influenced by your technique. The more technically efficient you are, the longer distance per stroke, and therefore, the less strokes it takes you to complete a length. To a point, but we won't confuse things too much today. Oi, you stole mine, Mark. Distance per stroke. This, as the name suggests, is how far you travel per stroke. Now, while all of these may sound very similar, they're not. But there is a direct relationship between your stroke rate and your stroke count. 
Now, if you can increase your stroke rate without shortening your stroke length, you will see your stroke count decrease and you will actually swim faster. And this is why many performance coaches will actually record your swimmer's stroke rate alongside their stroke count as a performance metric. Now, as you can imagine, trying to record all these things while you swim without a coach on deck, doing the counting is going to be almost impossible. But luckily, smartwatches these days do have this metric built into them. In fact, a lot of them will churn out a number they call SWILF. My coach used to call this index, and basically, it's a calculation where they add your time per length to your stroke count per length to give you a number. Now, the ideal number is obviously as low as possible. You want to have your lowest time and your lowest stroke rates. Therefore, you're extremely efficient. The best swimmers in the world, they'll get around 50 for this SWILF or index. That is 25 seconds for 25 strokes to cover 50 meters. You try that at home. Huh, yeah. Good luck on that one. Now back to some more familiar metrics, heart rates. Now this is an interesting one in swimming because, well, it's not that easy to measure, or at least measure accurately. Now obviously a lot of smartwatches these days have optical heart rate sensors built into them on the wrist, which is super convenient, but you tend to get a lot of interference in the water, by the water itself. So you can maybe play around with using things like chest heart rate straps, tend to work better for women than for men, the water catches it and rolls it down basically for men. There are other options out there, other optical heart rate sensors that fit underneath the cap on the temple, which I believe work quite well. Personally though, it's not a metric that I tend to worry about too much in swimming, but I do know plenty of people out there that do, so feel free to experiment yourself. And one more familiar one, calories. Now, again, I'm not sure how many of you would want this actually displayed on your watch while you're doing a swim session, but it is quite interesting to record and look at afterwards to see how hard you've worked. Yeah, well, I reckon we've covered it all there, mate. I must admit that whole stroke count, stroke rate, distance per stroke thing, it's quite confusing at first, but what I would recommend if you have got a smartwatch capable of recording these things is literally do that. Start recording some of that data, see what it turns out, and maybe even start then tweaking things and seeing what changes. It's really quite interesting, right? Really. Yeah, maybe. The only thing I'm really interested in is how fast I'm swimming. Well, I think it's interesting. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Thanks ever so much for tuning in, and make sure you don't miss any more of our content by subscribing to the channel.